12 Windows from Told Again by Walter De La Mare, edited by Vic Parker. There was once princess who lived alone with her father the king, the queen having died many years before. princess was wise and gentle and loved her father very much, so much so that the king dreaded the day when the princess would marry and leave him alone in the empty palace. But she had promised she would never marry until she met a man who would have three chances to hide himself in the palace so cleverly that she could not see him. Now you might think this was not so difficult, but the princess had witch's eyes. And she could spy out the smallest thing like an ant or one tiny daisy on the play's lawn. She had a special room at the top of tower, in the palace which had twelve windows that the princess could look out of to practice her great skill. Princes and handsome young men came to court the princess, but all failed to hide themselves well enough. Now there was a sweetheart would watch the princes and die handsome young men come and go. And after a while, he thought he might just as well try himself to see if he could win the hand of a princess. When he arrived at the place gate, the guards just laughed at him, but the watchman who was passing at the time thought the young swine had had an honest face. So he lent him a cloak of green velvet, and the swine head was ushered into the princess's room. Straight away she saw that he had an honest face but she also saw his poor clothes under the cloak. And she saw his heart beating against his ribs. She wished him luck and gave him an hour to hide. The swineherd went down down deep into the palace dungeons and hid himself under a pile of straw. When the hour was up, the princess climbed up into her special room and looked through the first window. She could see no sign of the swineherd. She looked through the second window. She could see no sign of the swineherd, but then she looked through the third window, and there she could see him lying under the straw. The princess was sorry as she realized that the young swineherd was the first of the many young men who had come to court her that she actually liked. The next day, the swineherd went to the palace fish pond, and, taking a deep breath, he plunged to the bottom of the pond and hid under the roots of the graceful water lilies. He waited and waited, his lungs bursting. The princess climbed up into her special room and looked through the first window. Then at a second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. no sign of the swineherd, and the princess found she was pleased. She looked through the sixth and the seventh and the eighth. There was no sign of the swineherd, and the princess found she was delighted. There was no sign of swineherd, and the princess found she was delighted. But then 
She looked through the night, and she saw the swineherd crouched in the pond, under the roots off the water lilies. The princess found she was full of sadness. The young swineherd realized he was up against some powerful witchcraft. So that night he went to seek out his friend the white fox. He told her all about the princess and her witch's eyes. And he also told the fox that he had fallen in love with the princess. The fox just nodded and told him to get a good night's sleep. She woke him in the morning before it was light. When the swineherd was washed and dressed, the fox touched him with the tip of her tail and he turned into a beautiful white mountain hare. Then she turned herself into an old woman and taking the hare in her arms, she walked to the palace and stood by the garden gate. princess was walking in the palace gardens, her face sad as she thought of the swineherd who today faced his last chance at becoming her husband. She saw an old woman standing by the garden gate, with a white mountain hare in her arms. The hare looked so beautiful that the princess could not resist going up to stroke its fur. The old woman who, of course, was really the clever fox, gave the hare who, of course, was really the swineherd, to the princess. The princess was amazed by the beauty of the hare and by the softness of its fur. But when she went to give it back, the old woman had disappeared. The princess placed the hare on her shoulder and together they climbed the stairs to the room with the twelve windows. The hare crept round under the princess's hair as she looked out of the first window. There was no sign of the swineherd. She looked out of all the windows until she came to the twelfth. There was no sign of the swineherd. With a beating heart, she went to look out of the last window. She so wanted not to see the swineherd. She looked and looked again. She could not see him. The one thing witch's eyes cannot do is see behind them. And so the swineherd had won the hand of the princess. The hare darted down the stairs while the princess was still crying with delight and ran out of the palace to where the fox was waiting. She touched the hare with the tip and there stood the swineherd once again. He thanked the fox profusely and then ran back to the palace as fast as ever he could. There he found the princess standing in the garden looking everywhere for him. They went to see the king and the whole story came out. The princess and the swineherd said they loved each other. The swineherd said he did not want to live anywhere else in the land. So the king did not lose his daughter. The princess married a man she really liked. The swineherd gained everything from just having a try. The white fox was invited to the wedding, and they all lived happily ever after.